Fallout songs. <laughs> Top 10. Welcome back to Top 10, a show where I try to listen to an entire artist's discography and I give you the Top 10. Well, just another day of disappointment living here in the post-apocalyptic fallout. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty bummed, everybody, because I myself have been a settler who has been all around this wasteland. I have been all over the place looking for the best music. I have been to the Capital Wasteland. I have been to New Vegas. I've been up to Boston and I have been down to Appalachia. The thing is, I've been everywhere and no matter where I've been, I was able to get a radio signal. Except in this small little settlement in the middle of nowhere where I have been finding myself for the last couple of months because super mutants are right outside the encampment and I am freaking stuck over here. And I got nothing. Listen to what I pick up. Listen to what I pick up on, on my radio right now. Like, I don't know if the radio tower got blown up or something, but... I, I am fuming. I am fuming. There's nothing here. But I've been bunkered up here for a little while now, and so I've just been using this time to reminisce on uh, what I've been, you know, missing over literally anywhere else. So yeah, just sit back and reminisce along with me as I talk about the top 10 best songs I've heard over the radio. So uh, get ready, everyone. It's it's gonna be a blast. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this whole video in lore, the Fallout video game franchise lore. Remember just a second ago when I said I was in the town of Boston? Well, yes, that is true. A more specific town I went to was a town called Good Neighbor, and I would be such adult if I didn't bring up the wonderful talent called Magnolia. Train, train, woo, woo, train. Magnolia is a singer who sings at the little bar called The Third Rail in Good Neighbor. And I know what you might be thinking. Big deal. There's been plenty of performers all around the wasteland. Like, what is this, the Topps Casino? There's been people since Vault 76 who have been playing music on the side of the street as long as there's been a post-apocalypse. And I'm like, yes, I know. I know. But there's something special about Magnolia. Magnolia is one of the few people that I, I've been able to find through my travels who was able to find a way to record their own music. Magnolia, to date, I was able to release five new songs that was able to release on the Diamond City Radio. And as someone who in the wasteland uh, is a music critic, that's a really big deal because I've been just reviewing the same like 10 songs that I hear over the local station. The fact that we have new music to possibly look forward to is amazing. Can't go forward, can't go back. Set your mind at ease, you better relax. Throw yourself a party wherever you're at. Dance your blues apart before you can start finding your way back to civilization. I don't know if you know this, but I only have one holotape to my name. And this thing right here is just M Mrs. Miller's greatest hits. That's all I have to listen to if there's no radio station. So the fact that we have new music coming and maybe more holotapes maybe being released, uh, that would be... Uh, absolutely uh, good for everybody. Of the five songs that she has released to Diamond City Radio, my favorite one is the song Train Train, uh, which is 
uh, uh, about, you know, just living life, enjoying life while you can, which is really, really good. And it's also really good to have performers who are post-war. I don't know about you, but, you know, listening to songs that are talking about how awesome radiation and radium is, uh, you know, it makes me kind of bitter when I've been losing all of my hair. This isn't coming back. This is, this is gone. And so, yeah. Yeah, I like Train Train. It's, it's a good song. Number nine is the song Anything Goes. You know, in the wacky world of, you know, the apocalypse, no other words ring more true. Anything does go. Do you know how many times I had an eat a man to survive? It was probably not Robco regulation back in the day. <laughs> Now, when Cole Porter wrote the song back in 1934, Cole Porter was not talking about this kind of disaster we are currently living in every single day of our freaking lives. Uh, Cole was talking about a different kind of disaster. Cole was talking about the Great Depression and how everything was, you know, ass backwards at that time. The world has gone mad today, and good's bad today, and black's white today, and day's night today, and that gent today, he gave a cent today, once had several chateaus. Even though we've been born hundreds of years apart, it does feel really nice how relatable Cole's words are, because me and Cole are both asking the exact same thing, what has the world been coming to? Made for the Broadway musical of the same name, Anything Goes was talking about the different kind of things going on. It was basically a big uh, satirical piece of the news of the era. The richest people to ever be born are now begging for coins on the street and they can't even afford baby clothes. Meanwhile, Rockefeller is hoarding so much money to produce Broadway shows for the 1% while there are people dying on the streets. But it does make me feel, you know, really good. It, it, the, the time of stress then really correlates to the time of stress I'm feeling right now because I can't get any freaking radio signal in this freaking settlement. Number eight is the song Easy Living by Billie Holiday. This is such a sweet song just about doing anything you can to make the person that you love the most the most happy they could ever be. Living for you is easy living, it's easy to live when you're in love and I'm so in love, there's nothing in life but you. It's a song that makes me extremely hopeful for the future. And I know in the past few years, we've been surrounded by disease, death, stress. But when I listen to this song that Billy sang, it makes me glad I am alive. It is, it, is, it is a wonderful song. Number seven is Jukebox Saturday Night. Goodman and Carter and Miller help to make things bright. Make some hot, make some vanilla. Jukebox Saturday Night. The song Jukebox Saturday Night is a party in a pit boy. It is an instant shindig and a hullabaloo. This song is filled with the most like 1940s and 50s imagery you can think of. Going to get a soda pop at the local jukebox joint, the old five and dime, and dancing with your sweetheart, your honey lamb. Making one Coke blasters till it's time to scram. This 
song was made by Glenn Miller and his orchestra, and one of the coolest things they did in the song was not just have this awesome swinging party vibe going on about, you know, letting other people pay for the jukebox because you're too poor to afford to uh, play the cool hit songs. They, you know, referenced other bands at the time. They referenced Benny Goodman, Kay Kaiser, Henry James. But the coolest shout out they do is for the Ink Spots. Who are the Ink Spots? Y you know what? Just hold your horses, I'm about to talk about them. <laughs> da, 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 da. If I didn't know why the roses grow It's a fun song, a dynamic song, and it distracts me from the cancer I most certainly have. Number six. My echo, my shadow, and me. I told you, I told you we were going to talk about the ink spots, and now look at you now. I'm now, I'm now talking about the ink spots. We three. We're not a crowd, we're not even company, my echo, my shadow, and me. Now you might not know what this is because, you know, it's not like your regular standard holotape. Music used to be printed on discs. Isn't that weird? That's crazy. Uh, in fact, this is one of the discs we have right here. This is the ink spots. I think they used to call these things cassettes. I'm not 100% on that. Some songs are so classic. Into Each Life, Some Rain Must Fall, Maybe, uh, I Don't Want to Set the World on Fire. It's a sin to tell a lie. These are classic songs you have probably heard on any radio station. Now, the Ink Spot songs I just mentioned, they while they are really good, and I know a lot of people really love those songs, they're not my favorite. And I think my favorite is My Echo, My Shadow, and Me. When you are out there on the wastes, you are by yourself for the majority of the time. And you're lonely. It's really lonely out there. It is desolate out there. It, it resonates, It you know, right here. This is one of the saddest songs I've ever heard. We three, mm, we're all alone. Mm, seems like we're living in a memory. It's my echo. My shadow and me. Ink spots, they're awesome. I don't think I could ever make a Fallout list without the ink spots on there for a good reason because it, it just really puts you in the spirit to go and shoot some stuff up or just walk really sad. <laughs> Number five is the song Blue Moon, specifically from Frank Sinatra. Blue Moon, hey. They all saw me standing alone Without a dream in my heart Without a love of my own Blue Moon is a very fascinating song. The song's melody was written by a Richard Rogers and a Lorenz Hart back in 1934. MGM was the one who was like, hey, you guys, we're gonna pay you to make a song for us. And And then MGM was like, you know what, we're just gonna release it as a single, but you need to make the song like a little bit more romantic. And they were like, okay, fine. And after the third rewrite, that's when we got Blue Moon. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, baby. We're going to take over New Vegas. Would you like to play a game of... We're going to take this thing, have a world of 
palm of my greasy hand. Now, the Blue Moon that we that was first recorded, that was by Ted Fio Rito in 1934. And that version of Blue Moon is wildly different from what you would hear on the New Vegas radio station uh, when you hear Frank Sinatra sing it. It's completely different. And I think it's extremely fascinating. And if you are lucky enough to find a holotape version of that, keep it. It is a really cool listen, and you should absolutely hear it for yourself. Frank Sinatra is far from the only person to ever do a Blue Moon cover. Billie Holiday, as I've talked about earlier, she had a Blue Moon cover. Elvis had a Blue Moon cover. Or, sorry, you probably know him as The King. Listen, if you, like, blindfolded yourself and, like, went into, like, a music store, you could probably trip over 15 different covers of Blue Moon. It's very, it's a very popular cover. It's so nice to be just walking down uh, near, near Vegas. It's the middle of the night. You're walking the desert, and you see that big, that big sphere in the sky shining down on you, and you're like, I'm, I'm gonna do big things. Number four is Orange Colored Sky. I was walking along, minding my business, when out of an orange colored sky, flash, bam, alakazam, wonderful you came by. What is more appropriate for our desolate landscape than Nat King Cole's Orange Colored Sky? A song that is comparing a beautiful person with that of a mushroom cloud. Warms my heart. Cause the ceiling fell in and the bottom fell out, went into the spin and I started to shower the hit. This is it! This is it! I've been hit! This is another one of those cases where the song was not written for Nat King Cole, it was written for someone else, and Nat King Cole did a cover of it. And that's just like how music worked apparently back then. Like, people kept just saying like, hey, nice song, I want to do the same thing. And then you get like hundreds of covers all coming out within the same 10 years. And Nat King Cole, is, his version is just so good. It is fantastic. The Orange Colored Sky version I, I have constantly heard is my favorite version that I've, I, I, that's been out there. But I have heard there is a, another version by Betty Hutton that I would, I would have loved to hear. With, with Betty Hutton's version, it, it has so much, you know, electricity, I've been told and so much like oomph when she's singing it. But I would say that the Betty version doesn't have the great orchestra that Nat King Cole was able to uh, have on his recording. <laughs> to make sense to like literally anybody, even Fallout fans. This is an alienating video. <laughs> Number three is a kiss to build a dream on. Give me a kiss to build a dream on and my imagination will thrive upon that kiss. Sweetheart, I ask no more than this. A kiss to build a dream on. Now I'm bending my rules a little bit. Technically this song did not appear on any of the radio stations, but I did hear it out in the wasteland. Now it was an extremely bad radiation storm happening and I happened to be lucky enough to stumble across a vault door that was open and I walked inside the vault and thankfully there was nothing crazy going on in there. But there happened to be a presentation that was on loop in one of the classrooms. In one of the classrooms, it showed a little ad for the GEC. When I was watching the video, the presentation, I was encaptivated by this little song by Louis Armstrong. When I'm alone with my fancies, I'll be with you. The song was originally written by Bert Colmer, Harry Ruby, and Oscar Hammerstein II, that's a name, in 1935. The song was originally made just like Blue Moon for a film called A Night on the Opera, and just like Blue Moon, it was never released 
uh, for that film. I don't know what's with these songs just being not used in films when they're fantastic. The song eventually had the lyrics changed for a commercial release, and Louis Armstrong had the privilege to release it to the public in 1951. This song is excellent, and it has the trademark trumpet that Mr. Armstrong was just known for when it gets to the Ah, it shakes me to my core. It is fantastic. Number two is Big Iron. I would be stabbed 48 times in the chest if I did not bring up this song in this list. To the town of our free of a stranger one fine day. Hardly spoke to folks around him, didn't have too much to say. No one dared to ask his business, no one dared to make a slip. But the stranger there among them had a big iron on his hip. Big iron on his hip. Another song from Radio New Vegas. This song was released back in 1959. A Mr. Marty Robbins brought the song to the world in his album Gunfighter Ballads and Trail Songs. And this song is just a blast. It is a whole Western film that's just being played into your ears. And when you listen to the song while you're out there on the desert, you feel like you are inside your own little Western movie. And you are the main character, and you are cleaning up this desolate wasteland. Come on, Texas Red, put your hands up. Big Iron, Big Iron When he tried to match the ranger with the Big Iron on his hip Big Iron on his hip I'm not the only one who thinks the song is awesome. So many people think the song is awesome. Especially the people at the Western Writers of America. Because they placed this song as one of the top 100 Western songs of all time. And I can see why. It's exciting, it's thrilling, it's amazing. So yeah, if you haven't listened to this, I recommend it, it is so cool. All right, folks, it's now time for my number one pick. And that song uh, goes to Dean Martin. <laughs> Dean Martin's Ain't That A Kick In The Head. <laughs> It should be illegal to be as smooth as Dean Martin is on this track. It is such a legendary performance. How lucky can one guy be? I kissed her and she kissed me. Like a fellow once said, ain't that a kick in the head? Well, I mean, I say legendary, but it really wasn't a hit when it came out for some reason. The song was performed by Dean Martin in the film Ocean's Eleven. The melody was pro uh, produced by a Mr. Jimmy Van Housen uh, with lyrics by Sammy Kane. Yeah, when it came out there was a, really wasn't anything like special about it. It was just here's the song and people moved on. But the wonderful thing about the apocalypse is we don't really have that many options when it comes to music. So as soon as someone found an old holotape backup of this song, well guess what? It became pretty much the anthem to the New Vegas Strip. It fits so good. It makes you feel like a million dollars every single time you listen to it. The horn section is blasting with peak performance. And even when I have vomited out my 10th atomic cocktail, I still feel like a billionaire, even if I only have a handful of caps left in my name. <sighs> all right, everybody, I guess I'm gonna have to get out there now. It seems like all the super mutants have started to kill all the settlers here, so I need to get out of here real quick before I am going to become a gigantic gore bag. So, uh, anyway, thanks for watching, and, uh, you know, don't die out there. And always remember... War. <laughs> war never... War never changes. <laughs> Alright, time to die. Cool. Everyone tells me he's no good, he doesn't love me like he should. I would forget him if I only could. He's a demon, he's a devil, he's a dog. That 
man could look me in the eye and tell the biggest, sweetest lie, and I wouldn't get that lipstick on his tie. He's a demon. He's a devil. A doll. So that was the top 10 video, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, before we go, I actually have a Patreon question I have to answer. A uh, user by the name of How Did I Get Here uh, asked me if I could give him some uh, artist recommendations from other artists I like that I haven't really talked about on the channel yet. Crash Test Dummies, God Shuffled His Feet. Cindy Lopper, She's So Unusual. Ween the Mollusk. Moxie Fruvis, Va Bargainville. Comita, What Makes It Go? I actually don't know if that's the way the band's name is pronounced, so bear with me. Half Japanese, Greatest Hits. Uh, my favorite Half Japanese is also uh, Charmed Life, but uh, Half Japanese, Greatest Hits if you just want some singles here. I mean, you know who Tyler the Creator is. I know you're not stupid. This is Flower Boy. You already know that. Violent Femmes is a band I want to get more into, but I, I love their first album. I, I really want to listen to some more Violent Femmes. So yeah, those are some albums right here. I don't, I don't really have any Mountain Goats on physical, but the Mountain Goats are pretty good. And uh, if you're looking for the stupidest time ever, uh, go check out Crud Bump. <laughs>